example where we can use cosine to find uh, a side length that we need. Okay, we're going to actually find this side length over here. Uh, rewind, reminder number one is that uh, we name sides often according to the angle or the vertex that they're across from. So this is small p, this is small r, and this is small q over here. So I guess we're finding q. And then we need to use a cosine law because we have two sides and the angle in between them, the two sides and the contained angle. So, as we uh, move along here, we're going to figure out our set. Of, first, we're going to set up our cosine law. Now, we know that cosine law is sometimes we've written as a squared equals b squared uh, plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So, one thing we must be able to do is to develop um, a cosine law specific to this triangle. So, we're finding uh, q, so I, and we know um, capital Q. So, we're going to... Um, say that q squared equals with the other two sides uh, p squared and r squared minus 2 times the other side so that's p and r and times cos of the opposite angle from the side we're trying to find so cos q and I think we have all of that information so p is 18.2 squared r is 24.1 we're going to square that as well times 2 times the 18.2 times the 24.1, and then uh, I left, ran out of room, but times cos of 76.8 degrees. So, uh, now, depending on how good your calculator or how is or how good you are with your calculator, you can do that in uh, one step or many steps. So, I can just find out what 18.2 squared is. That's 331.24, 24.1 squared is 580.81 and minus 2 times 18.2 times 24.1 times the cos of 76.8. So maybe I'll figure out what that is for a second. Uh, let's see, cos of 76.8 equals this times 24.1 times 18.2 times 2. This whole last thing works out to 200.32 uh, approximately. And so when I add these uh, three, or this plus this minus that, I would say, well, that's 331.24 plus 580.81 minus that answer that I had. I have an answer button, so I'm just going to use that. And that works out to 711.73. And uh, I can't forget that this is what q squared equals, so I'm going to have to uh, square root both sides. So the square root of my 711, find the square root button, there it is. The square root of that answer equals 26. Uh, six eight. So, therefore, side Q is approximately twenty six point seven centimeters long. And there we go. We also might ask to. Um, we might be asked to solve for an angle, right? If we have all three side lengths, and we're asked to, for example, find what is angle F, uh, cosine law will do that for us as well. If we're asked to solve for F, that means that we need uh, to use an equation that has um, cos F at the end of it. So, and we know that that also will start with F squared. So F squared equals uh, E squared plus G squared minus 2 EG cos F. Right? And remembering, of course, this is side F, this is side E, and this is side G. Okay, uh, I always work from it this way and then, uh, and then work backwards to, to isolate angle F. Um, your textbook um, also has a, um, a pre-rearranged um, formula. Uh, you might want to take a look at that and see if that helps you 
more. I just find it easier to remember one thing and then just rearrange. So I'm going to fill in my numbers. 5.86 squared equals 6.5 squared plus uh, 7.36 squared minus 2 times the 6.5 times the 7.36 times the cos of f. So remembering that I want f by itself. That means i got to get rid of everything else that's on this side. This and this are not hard to get rid of. I'm just going to subtract the 6.5 squared. I'm just going to subtract 7.36 squared. The thing that is most often forgotten by students is that all of this is multiplied together, so the only way you're going to get rid of this is to divide it. Right? So I'm just going to figure out, um, I'll do it uh, maybe the quick and easy way. I'll find out what 5.86 squared minus the 6. 0.5 squared minus the 7.36 squared is. So really I'm just subtracting 5.86 squared and then I'm going to subtract the 6.5 squared and subtract the 7.36 squared. That effectively puts everything up to there onto one side of the equation and I get that that side works out to 60, negative 62.08. What am I left with? Well I'm left with this part of the equation. right? On this side, I've done put negative, uh, negative minus the 6.5 squared and minus the 7.36 squared. But here I'm left with negative 2 times um, 6.5. So let's actually figure out what that is. Uh, negative 2 times 6.5 times 7.36. It works out to negative 95.68. And so that is what the coefficient to cos f is. Right, so I'm going to have to now divide both sides by that. And I'll be left with cos f on this side. On this side I will be finding out, okay, what is negative 62.08 divided by negative 95.68? And it turns out to be about 0 0.649, which is not as important as taking, of course, the inverse cos of both sides in order to get rid of the cos on the side. So I will find out that the inverse cos of that answer is 49.5 and that is of course the number of degrees. So I know that in my uh, in my answer here this angle F is 49.5 degrees. So there you go. Using cosine law to solve for a side length using cosine law to solve for an angle. Now, of course, if I wanted to solve the rest of this triangle, if I had to find out what angle G was and angle E was, I now have an opposite pair, right? This side, or this angle and this side length. Um, I would probably, for accuracy, I wouldn't uh, use 49.5, I would use 49.5459, right? All this accuracy I want to keep because this is not exactly 49.5. But uh, I have now a triangle that can be easily uh, solved using sine law, so I wouldn't use the cosine law again, unless I was, um, wasn't too sure about this angle. Uh, sine law will give me, um, for example, I could put uh, cos, or sorry, sine f over f equals sine g over g, and that could solve for g, and then I could just add and subtract my angles from 180 in order to find uh, the rest of the angles. So there you go, uh, sine law, cosine law, and um, that is most of the, uh, the curricular stuff that you will need to know for this trigonometry unit.